This episode brought to you by HelloFresh. Delicious pre-measured ingredients and simple chef-made recipes delivered to your doorstep every week. being a good teaser. Even though you have been raised as a human being, you are not one of them. They can be a great people if they wish to be. I have sent them you, my son, Superman. Man, that still holds up. Too bad the movie sucks ass. How is this? I watched one Superman Returns video. It doesn't mean that's all I want to see. No, Superman Returns will never be trending. Okay, that's a little different. Hey, movie nerds! Today, I want to talk about the Snyder Cut and how it's not Superman Returns. What the shit? Now, I, for one, am shocked that it's not Superman Returns. I mean, everything pointed to the Snyder Cut being Superman Returns. Superman Returns! <sighs> Today on But The Chart Says, we're going to be taking a look at the likelihood of the Snyder Cut becoming a hit. <sighs> but seeing as how you clicked on a Superman Returns video, every video you see now has to be about that. How do you even know that? You might be wondering to yourself how I would even know that. Well, if you look at the chart. <sighs> Alright, I guess I'm talking about Superman Returns. <laughs> In 2006, with almost 20 years since the last Superman movie and several bizarre attempts with several bizarre people gone awry, Superman Returns settled on the master of comic book movies, at the time, Bryan Singer. He achieved surprising success with the first two X-Men films, so he seemed like a good middle-of-the-road choice for the Man of Steel. The only problem was, it was 2006. While superhero movies were just starting to make a comeback, they were nowhere near the powerhouse they are today. People didn't exactly know what the best way to handle them was, so they were mostly played pretty safe. Say what you will about comic book films after, but there's no doubt several of them pushed the envelope. Before then, even the biggest hits didn't take that many risks. Superman Returns might be the crowning achievement of playing it too safe. While certainly tapping on ideas that could be made interesting, it retreaded way too much of what's already been done before, resulting in a major bore fest. Audiences mainly said the deep stuff is fine, but Superman doesn't even throw a punch in this, causing the film to majorly underperform at the box office. So, what happened to turn arguably the most popular superhero of all time into an excuse to catch some super Z's? Let's talk about this two and a half hour snoozer as nobody else who talked about it, I think could actually stay awake. What? Oh. Uh, yeah, I tried, but I guess no one can get through this without falling asleep. I just thought that a pillow and blanket were required when discussing anything about this movie. <sighs> Let's snore our way through this with Superman Returns. <laughs> charge, charge, charge. Okay, let's talk about, in my opinion, the biggest problem with the movie, and it's right at the beginning, Superman missing for years. The excuse they go with is astronomers discovered distant remains of Krypton and he vanished. Kinda weird, but I guess could be interesting if we see the mindset, what led up to it, the choice of leaving his new home and the people he loves to possibly reconnect with a past one. Nah, just text it to us. In fact, only one sentence explains what happened. The rest reminds us what we already know. Is anyone going into a Superman movie really not aware of this information? It's like starting off The Dark Knight with... It may seem odd spending the majority of time focusing on what's not needed, but you'll find that's kind of the wedding theme of this movie. It's gonna pop up over and over. So you'll quickly put together, this is supposed to take place in the same universe as the Richard Donner films, using the same theme and even casting their lead based on how much he looks and sounds like the late Christopher Reeve. Well, I certainly hope this little incident hasn't put you off flying, miss. Well, I hope this experience hasn't put any of you off flying. Judging by the credits, you might think, maybe this could work. The music and visuals are pretty cool, getting you hyped up. 
but tell me if this matches the style of the Donner films. Superman battles, go, 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 go! This immediately doesn't match. It'd make more sense if this popped up after that shot. Super Scooby-Doo, where are you? It looks like a dying old millionaire is leaving everything to Lex Luthor for sadly the exact reason you would expect. You've shown me pleasures that I've never known. Ew! As the cast of Knives Out discover this via snarky Kevin Spacey performance. You can keep that. The rest is mine. Agree by far that is the most shocking thing Kevin Spacey will ever reveal about himself. Meanwhile, in Smallville, we see Superman's mother playing Scrabble with her dog. She might be nuts. As something lands in her backyard. Vegas. It looks like it's Clark, played this time by Brandon Ruth, arriving home via Kryptonium Pod. You might be wondering where he got that pod from. Did he make it? Did he find it? Is it the one he was delivered to Earth in, made to fit a grown man instead of a baby? We wrote you a sentence! Check, please! He started getting dull. This boring film will flop. Was this his house? This is where he learned who he was. Lex Luthor goes searching for Superman's home once more as this version is kinda Halloweening itself as rather than work with the challenges of the previous bad films like other clever franchises, Singer does what he always does. Says, nah, I don't wanna. Then shakes up the franchise like an Etch-a-Sketch. So now only parts one and two are canon even though I can't think of anything in 3 and 4 that technically gets in the way of anything here. In fact, I'd argue if Superman is aware Lex Luthor knows where he lives, he'd upgrade his security a little bit, at the very least to beef up crypto. And yes, I do appreciate the irony that a film ignoring previous installments in a franchise is ignored by the continuing installments in the franchise. My son, you do not remember me. Luther comes across a crystal with Superman's father, played by Marlon Brando's, let's just assume, pissed off ghost, who is unaware he's talking to Luther. Tell me everything, starting with crystals. And cinematography, a singer is still convinced wide angle close ups are the only shots there are. Clark wakes up at his mother's, has a flashback to when he was a kid playing with his powers, and tells his mom he didn't find anything on his journey. Five years. Did you find what you were looking for? Your home. That place was a graveyard, and I'm all that's left. You might be wondering what he's talking about exactly. What are the details of this already vague setup? The sentence is right there. You're gonna make him think he did a bad job. No, no, no <laughs> sentence. You worked for you did wonderful. They're wrong. Apparently, this is enough to jump right back to normal as Clark goes back to the Daily Planet ran by the loud and eccentric Perry White, played by the sleepy-eyed and fascinatingly disinterested Frank Langella. I want to know it all. Everything. Lois, Superman. What are these? Lottery numbers? Yeah, that makes you an expert, so you're going to do them again. Great Caesar's ghost. Come on. Oh. This man was Skeletor. There was no way he was told to go bigger, and he held back. Thank you for giving me my job back. Don't thank me. Thank Norm Palmer for dying. It was his time. The doctor said twin lasers through the heart, but we all know it was old age. He also discovers Lois Lane, played by I'm This Many, Kate Bosworth, won a Pulitzer for her story, Why the World Doesn't Need Superman. And Clark Kent is a douche too. He looks just like his mom. Fearless reporter Lois Lane is a mommy. She gave birth when she was 15. No, seriously, check the birth date, do the math, it's a little weird. Lex returns to the mansion where they see one of the dogs ate the other. Weren't there two of those? Damn it, that's so dark, I kinda have no choice but to love it. Where he tells Kumar to test the power of the crystal on a model of the city. The crystal does so much damage, the model starts screaming. <laughs> Apparently we're in American Toy Story now, causing electricity everywhere to go out, including a plane Lois is in. Dead, dead, dead. Jesus, was Lois Supergirl this whole time and we never knew it? That'd be a fucking twist. <laughs> Clark, of course, notices the plane and changes into Superman to save the day. There's some kind of unidentified bogey coming in from the north. It's a bird. It's a plane. Ah, it's Apache Chief. I always wondered when he was coming back. Don't know how we missed that. As you can see, they switched out the picture, the crowd is going wild, and we're all about to perish in flames. It was nice knowing you, Rick. I love you, Don. 
Superman stops the plane from crashing, though realistically I think it would turn to dust. And he's even reunited with Lois. I hope this experience hasn't put any of you off flying. Statistically speaking, it's still the safest way to travel. Well, you just became every airline's favorite movie. Everybody cheers as Superman officially returns and his first big action sequence back is... Fine. It makes sense to do something like this. I mean, he already saved more people than in Man of Steel. But here's the thing. From Luther testing his evil plan to Superman getting everybody to safety, we spent a total of 16 minutes. That's including the crystal getting a couple of jump starts before it causes panic, Clark talking to Jimmy inside a bar, Superman taking a ship to space that in no way affects the story, and watching effects that for the time were good, but not building the 16 minute scene around it good. Apparently this film didn't go through any test audiences, and this is one that really could have used it. There are so many scenes that easily could have been cut down, or at the very least, focused on more interesting stuff. Like Lois's son. Holy shit, Lois has a son. Well, what the hell is he like? He ought to be interesting. Well, he's there. Who are you? I'm Clark. <sighs> oh, thank God he's not my kid. We also have Richard, played by James Marsden, who's, get this, the other guy! Weird, right? The handsome do-gooder who's always second banana usually to something blue? But don't worry, they make him fascinating. They give him the intriguing characteristics of being a pilot and loves horror movies. Um, anything else? He's also a pilot and he loves horror movies. Well, guess that's it. How is it we're 50 minutes in? 50 minutes in and we've learned nothing about these people. Look at Lois's introduction in the first Superman. Immediately you have an idea what her personality is like. Egotistical, gets what she wants, would probably cause trouble just to report on it. What are you writing, Miss Lane? Ode to Spring. How do you spell massacre? It's got everything. It's got sex, it's got violence. There are very few people left in the world who feel comfortable saying that word. What word? Swell. Really? On screen for a few minutes, you immediately get her character. Almost an hour in, and what do we know about this, Lois? Well, she likes Superman. You were from totally different worlds. But you showed such a strong connection that you knew you were destined to be with each other. Really? Like Superman. 225 pounds, faster than a speeding bullet, draws his power from the sun, and he never lies. Yeah, if Superman wasn't in this movie, I have no idea what she'd be talking about. In fact, even when he wasn't in the movie, she was still talking about him. And got a Pulitzer for it! She has a password. Try Superman. Right. And the funny thing is, going by this movie's portrayal, Superman's kind of a dick. And then he just takes off without explaining why or without even saying goodbye. Well, maybe he wanted to say goodbye, but maybe it was too difficult for him. I mean, that excuse worked on all the hookers I kept employed. I figured it would work on you. Oh, that's right. Facebook's not a thing yet. Gonna have to stalk the old-fashioned way. Are you sure we didn't put on Brightburn Returns? That article that you wrote. Why the world doesn't need Superman? No, 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 the other one. I spent the night with Superman. No, wait, the other one. Why I love Superman and will never love anyone else, especially people named Richard. Back to back, we have what's great about this movie followed by what's awful about this movie. Superman flies high above the Earth, listening to all the cries of the world and thinks which ones are the most important to help. That's a great scene and deserves the time they took to show it, but it's followed by this. No, oh, wait, I'm sorry, I edited that to show what should have followed this. Superman stopping a bank heist and even a cool scene where a bullet bounces off his eye. But no, we get police sirens. The cars pulling up, money being carried, cops aiming their guns, the weapons being set up, loading up a helicopter that's never used, cops sneaking in, cops trying to stop him, cops failing in stopping him, turning the gun around, aiming the gun, and then finally Superman shows up. We could have figured all this out by just cutting to him reflecting the bullets, but no. We needed a whole two minutes of these non-main characters and their situation being established. And look, I know that sounds like a nitpick. I mean, two minutes, big whoop, but this is a problem that follows the entire movie. Look at here. All you need to show is a woman's car out of control and Superman saves her. Easy. But no, we gotta show him putting down the car, people looking, still putting down the car, people still looking, taking her to the hospital, this weird tracking on a kid taking a picture, why did you need a track in? A one second still shot would have been fine, watch. See, fine. These scenes are so desperate to waste people's time that there's literally a close-up of her pearls while she's driving. 
What the fuck did that matter? Why do I need to know she wears pearls? Act like our time is important! I mean, mine isn't. I'm doing this, but I have consideration for other people! I'm glad you're feeling better. I hope this hasn't put you off of driving. Statistically speaking, 1.3 million die in a year. Reports are flooding in from Metropolis, Houston, Gotham, and as far away as Cairo. The superhero Batman had this to say. How do you know where I live? Oh, I mean, I'm just crashing on this Wayne guy's couch. Eh? These are iconic. Because it's the comic book cover, get it? I would have made the same joke. And they were taken by a 12-year-old with a camera phone. Bullshit! A crystal clear high-res photo taken from a Breaking Bad phone you'd find in Fruit Loops? I can believe a man can fly, but not a Samsung SCH can take a picture that doesn't look like a Scary Stories illustration. Every other paper in this town has got a female reporter stashed on the roof covering Superman. Chief, I've done Superman. Hey, you made that joke, not me! <laughs> We should talk about medicine for our son. Clark proceeds to watch Lois as she leaves. For a rather long period of time. I'm sorry, am I supposed to be creeped out by Superman? I, I need a second opinion on this. Tamara? <coughs> yes? If I could see through walls and I watched you going up an elevator... That's some scary shit and there's no other way to see that. Okay, good. I'm not crazy. I don't think it's weird at all. Uh, Malcolm, do you have something else to do? I just like to watch you guys. Well, uh, two's great, but three's a crowd. <laughs> I get it. You two want to be alone. That's the idea. Okay. I have homework I gotta do anyway. Homework? Bye, lovebirds. Usually people move when they say goodbye. No, they don't. They watch people in their homes. Okay, you're becoming Superman creepy. Tamara, I think we should move. Are you watching me at night? As opposed to... I'm in the mood to- uh, oh. Um, I guess we're doing this. I'm in the mood to get fresh, pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to my door with HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Awkward. Uh, <clears throat> HelloFresh lets you skip those trips to the grocery store and makes home cooking fun, easy, and affordable. HelloFresh's recipes are incredibly delicious, offering so many recipes to choose from each week to help you break out of your recipe rut. Wow, okay. They help you save time and stress effortlessly. In fact, you can save up to 28% by using HelloFresh versus your grocery store shopping trips. With HelloFresh, you can also eat more sustainably. HelloFresh's pre-portioned ingredients means there's less prep for you and less food waste. I mean, am I just supposed to... Alright. HelloFresh is flexible and fits your lifestyle. Easily change your delivery days or food preferences and skip a week whenever you need. HelloFresh is also committed to giving back. They've donated over 2.5 million meals to charities in 2019. And this year, they're stepping up their food donations amid the coronavirus crisis. Come on, that's like a really cool thing they do. We're just gonna have you there while I'm saying that? Alright, let me talk about why I think they're so cool. I'm not very good at cooking, but with HelloFresh, it's made incredibly easy. Cutting down on those trips to the grocery store. The one I make the most is the cranberry apple pork chop. It's so easy to make and it's delicious to eat. All right, let's see, will this do anything? Apparently not. I'm just gonna tell them about the deal. If you go to hellofresh.com slash nostalgia60 and use the code nostalgia60, you get $60 off your first three weeks. That's including free shipping on your first box. Additional restrictions apply, just visit hellofresh.com for more details. How awesome are they? Well, they let us drag out this stupid joke for God knows how long. So they not only have great food, they have a great sense of humor. Still can't do what is happening. I don't know. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Nostalgia60 for great food delivered right to your home. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Wow. This is... Wow.
Superman approaches Lois at the top of the Daily Planet. Finally, we can get some insight into the reason he abandoned his home and the people he swore to protect. How could you leave us like that? Krypton? Well, when astronomers thought they found it, I had to see for myself. Pretty much that sentence again. Yeah, that totally justifies ditching your responsibilities and even letting a dangerous criminal go. Oh, did I forget to show that part? How did Lex Luthor get out of prison? What is the appeals court Lord called Superman happened? as a witness, and he wasn't around. I'm 100% with Lois here! He tries the old trick of flying her through the sky, but thank God they have no chemistry whatsoever, and she looks at all of this with blank indifference. One of the most romantic scenes in cinematic history recreated with the love completely neutered. I felt more passion when Supergirl flew a bumper car with her unconscious boyfriend. I'm at least somewhat curious how that relationship turned out. Well, I felt nothing. Me too. Let's never do that again. So will I see you around? I'm always around. That's surprisingly not comforting, you creepy-ass stalker. Lois does more research on the blackouts, leading her to Lex Luthor's yacht. Yeah, this could be dangerous. Bring the kid along. Are we trespassing? No. Yes. What's important is how much you can serve as a human shield. In one of the films, Stranger reveals... <laughs> wings! Wings! Ah! Lex spots them and holds them hostage, of course, revealing his new evil plan. You'll be happy to know it's exactly the same as the old evil plan. Hello, new West Coast, my West Coast. You're building an island? Not just an island, an entirely new continent. The West Coast as we know it would fall into the sea. But the United States will be under water. Costa del Ex, Lutherville, Marina del Ex. The world will be begging me for a piece of high-tech beachfront property. Millions of innocent people would be killed. But millions of people will die. Billions! You know, I gotta give you credit, Lex. Nuclear Man was stupid, but at least it was new. I'll have advanced alien technology. Bring it on! Otisburg will be a reality! We're shown he has kryptonite, as well as the big twist in the film that is so bizarrely delivered, it's one of my favorite laughs in the movie. It's when Luther asks who the boy's father is. Richard, we're approaching the coordinates. Are you sure? Yes, sir. Latitude 40 degrees north. <laughs> Not only does it interrupt a big dramatic moment, but it's... Not even that great a joke to interrupt such a big dramatic moment. And that weirdly makes it hilarious. It's almost as funny as thinking this took place after Superman 2. Wouldn't that kid be like 25? Oh well, the strongest alien in the world has offspring. Better leave him with one lone henchman. That should keep things safe. He wanted to be in the Joker's gang, but even he wouldn't take Juggalos. Lois gets their coordinates to land while Jason and the henchmen play chopsticks because... Superman. But Lois is spotted and attacked. Ah! I'd pay real money if his corpse looked like this. Open this door! Open it! Don't leave me in here with this freak! Lois asked Jason if he can open the door, but I guess it was one of those in-the-moment things. Could you help Mommy open the door? Sorry. Gotcha. Hey, can one of you out there beat me up so my kid can go berserk? Luther fires the crystal and the kryptonite, creating a giant island, and Superman once again has to choose between saving the people or Lois first. Buildings shake, water rises, and even the sewers are set on fire. while Marsden flies in to save Lois and Jason, honestly looking more dedicated and heroic than Superman in many respects. Don't worry, she'll totally leave him for the guy that left her. But she gets knocked out and engulfed deep below because we have to do that for some reason too. Unlike the first film where it's a legit shocking and heartbreaking moment when she dies, we all know they're not gonna do that again. So we watch them underwater and Superman save people for 10 minutes. This movie has the exact opposite problem of Man of Steel. Where in that one I want him to save more people, here I want to see him beat some shit up. Even the one criminal, one criminal we see him stop in this entire movie, it's taken care of off screen. I'm tired of just seeing him hold stuff. It's 2006, you can do a lot more. Hell, in 1980 you were doing a lot more. So why is this supposed to be interesting? Oh yeah, drag out that drowning sequence. I'm so afraid they won't make it. Hey, remember that Superman reboot where they killed his son as well as Lois? Really got me there, movie. 
that saves him in time, yeah, I was shocked too. And he lifts them to safety. <laughs> well, I hope this hasn't put you off of sailing. Statistically speaking, it's a hobby. He checks to make sure Lois is okay. She'll be fine. Also, she's pregnant with triplets. Good luck with that! <laughs> Superman confronts Luther, unaware the island he's created is filled with kryptonite. What's the word I'm searching for? It's a little alien. It lacks that human touch. You're the last person to talk about human touch. He punches Superman and his henchmen join in, rendering him helpless. Cause we gotta do that scene too. I guess it's supposed to be sad, but I'm just cracking up over how Spacey says the word kryptonite. Kryptonite. <laughs> to feel bad in any scene that has a delivery like that. I didn't know when you said we kill billions of people that meant someone dying! Ugh, give up! Thank God, this movie doesn't have enough footage of people drowning. Lois and her family saves him, but oh no, the plane might not make it. Yeah, isn't that the biggest nail biter you want in a Superman movie? Whether a plane will take off? Oh, I guess that's it. They're holding in that shot a long time. I guess they're dead. Better roll the credits, Luther won. Oh, oh you got me again, movie two fake outs. How are you doing this? Please strike out this hideous looking climax as it's such a relief from the hideous looking everything else. Yeah, did I mention this movie's hideous yet? It's fucking hideous. Thank you. Superman says he can't go out on such a pussy note, so he flies back to try and stop Luther. Lex, are billions of people really going to die? No, they get ice cream. The fuck do you think? The exciting climax happens that I know you've all been waiting for. Superman lifts a giant rock. Woo! Yeah, lift that big thing! This is so much different than the time he held those other big things. This time it's bigger! Woo! Yeah, lift that rock! Superman! This is what we waited two hours to see! Thank Christ, can you imagine if he actually threw a punch in this movie? Like, hit anybody? Fuck that noise! He's lifting a rock! Woo! A rock! He cheeses himself back to Earth as I guess they're building up the ultimate sacrifice for the people. Giving his life for humanity. I don't even think he likes people. In the other films, he talks with the community, makes jokes, saves cats from trees. In this version, he acts like he wants to get away from folks as soon as he saves them. Would you like to get a cup of coffee sometime? Good night, Catherine. I guess the idea is he wants to save more people, but if you want to drag out this big emotional moment like humanity meant so much to him, show him with humanity. Because God knows we're not going to get it with him and Lois, or him and Richard, or even him and his goddamn son. The movie opens with him saying he ditched everybody. I feel like asking, what the hell were you doing for two and a half hours? hours if not exploring your human connections. Except I literally saw what you were doing all that time and I still have no idea! It's kind of morbid, Perry. Always be prepared. Oh, another brilliant fake out! I'm sure they'll kill Superman in his first big reboot back. Idiots. <laughs> you wait for the second film to do that, that's thinking. Meanwhile, Lex's assistant feels bad and sabotages him because we gotta go through the- oh fuck, you know by this point. And they're stranded on a deserted island. What will we have to eat? <laughs> no, seriously, they ate that fucking dog. And I still like him better than Eisenberg. He would eat that dog unprompted. Lois visits Superman in the hospital and whispers in his ear the truth. I killed Mufasa. And he eventually gets better and visits Jason in his sleep. Again, this isn't terrifying in the slightest. There can only be one. You will be different. Sometimes you feel like an outcast, but you'll never be alone. Yeah, say whatever pretty speech you want, you still have no connection with this kid. Apart from bumping into him, hopefully remembering his name. And abandoning him like you abandoned an entire planet of living creatures to look for alien dirt. I'm inspired to spit. I'm not paying child support unless you say it. Will we see you? I'm always around. 
spoken like a true Debbie dad. Good night, Lois. Good luck with your fiance. I'm sure he'll be fine with everything you've been keeping from him. My God, we're terrible people. I can't even smile at the camera. I'm so damn depressed. I'm back! But not for very long. As stated earlier, Superman Returns was not the box office powerhouse they hoped for, and they eventually rebooted it again with Man of Steel seven years later. And for all that film's problems, I can at least point to a couple of fun moments. This one is just a drawn-out bore. It does have some good ideas, but they're never explored enough to be made interesting. Much like Superman in this movie, it begins with a good concept and then abandons it for seemingly no reason. I wouldn't mind seeing Superman as a father. I think it'd actually be kind of cool to see what a super kid would be like. I'm even down for him being gone for a while. I don't know, there's something complex you can do with that. But they never dive into the mindset of what anyone is going through. I barely know shit about this kid, so why do I want to see him in another movie? Or any of these characters for that matter. Two and a half hours and I feel like I don't know them at all. That's a major problem. I think his heart is in the right place, but it's simply lacking in anything, for lack of a better word, super. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, and why do I still feel like I'm being watched? This is what heroes do. Working from home. <laughs> Bye. Hey, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out. Uh, this shout out's a little different than the other ones. Uh, these are dot orgs fighting for racial justice. And what I like about this is that uh, you give a certain amount and it's not just to one charity. It's actually distributed evenly to a bunch of different charities. Uh, like you got Unicorn Riot, Fair Fight Action, Know Your Rights, and I think like nine others in there. So it's a bunch of these charities uh, focusing on racial justice. And uh, the other nice thing about it too is that let's say there's one that you like a little more, you have more of a lean towards or something like that, you can uh, actually go and uh, distribute whatever amount you want. They have like a little box for each one, and if it's whatever, 10 bucks, they'll distribute it evenly. But let's say I want to give a little more to this, you can totally do that too. So, so there's a lot of options there, uh, which is really, really nice. So um, I highly encourage you to go check it out. If it's something you're interested in, please consider donating. And also, you know, a lot of them are also very open to volunteering as well. So check that out. Uh, just there's a lot of good organizations doing really, really good work and they deserve your attention, man. So check them out and take care.